All right, all right, here we go. We're going to talk about some inverse trig functions using the unit circle. So if you don't have your unit circle sitting right next to you, I highly recommend that you go get it pretty quick. So here we start. We're going to determine the value of the following trig function. As you can see, we're just going to be working with 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6 for these four examples for a reason. So you're going to have to look at your unit circle and I drew just those two coordinates over here for you and this guy would be your 5 pi over 6 and this would be 7 pi over 6 so what is the cosine of 5 pi over 6 now you gotta remember cosine is the x value so it's negative square root of 3 over 2 and what is the cosine or x value of 7 pi over 6 it's the exact same thing it's the negative square root of 3 over 2 and we're gonna talk about why in a minute and sine of 5 pi over 6 is 1 half and the sine of 7 pi over 6 is negative 1 half because sine is the y value of the coordinate at that angle so how are the cosine values related well as you can see that they're the exact same how are the sine values related they are well pretty close they're just opposites one's positive and one is negative negative. and the question is why well, the reason why is because in quadrant 2 our coordinates are negative positive but in quadrant 3 they're negative negative same values like same numbers square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half it's just that in different quadrants we have different signs so if I were to ask you what is theta if the cosine of theta is negative square root of 3 over 2 this is inverse trig where we give you the ratio you go find the angle not the other way around so what do you pick are you gonna pick 7 pi over 6 or are you gonna pick 5 pi over 6 well that's what we're gonna talk about today the answer is going to be 5 pi over 6 and what we're gonna do is talk about inverse trig functions inverse trig functions are used to find the angle measure when we are given the ratio okay so we're gonna be given the trig ratio we gotta find the angle measure it's the opposite of what we did the other day so how are we gonna figure this out how do we know which one to pick well first of all we are only gonna use values in one of two quadrants for each of the inverse trig functions now for cosine cosine is positive in quadrant one and negative in quadrant two it's also negative in quadrant three but positive again in quadrant four so we want a difference we want one quadrant that's positive and one quadrant that's negative that are right next to each other so for cosines we are only going to use 0 to pi or 0 to 180 sine sine is positive in quadrant 1 but it's also positive in quadrant 2 and it's negative in quadrants 3 and 4 we want them next to each other but here's the kicker they always have to include quadrant 1 so for sine it's going to be those two so that's where we have our positive and negative for inverse trig for sine so it's going to be negative 90 to 90 degrees they need to go in order as well we can't go from 0 to 90 then skip 180 and 270 and go from 270 to 360 they've got to be in a row so finally inverse tangent tangents positive here and here but it's negative here and here so technically you have options are you going to go in the top two quadrants or are you going to go in the right two quadrants well tangent follows the rules of sine because tangent is sine divided by cosine so we're going with what's on top okay so that's how we're going to use inverse trig so we are going to have multiple answers to these questions but the principal value the initial value is always going to be in one of those two quadrants okay so if you have that unit circle in front of you it's gonna be very helpful for the next six questions so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna work backwards now now I am going to give you 
the ratio, you're going to tell me what the angle is. <clears throat> so the cosine of theta is the square root of 2 over 2. Cosine, you are only going to look at the top two quadrants. And we are going to say, where is cosine, or the x value, the square root of 2 over 2. And we see that it is square root of 2 over 2 in quadrant 1, 45 degrees. It's also in quadrant 4, 315, but we're not going to use that one. So it is 45 degrees, also known as pi over 4. Okay, we're going to state it in both degrees and radians. Number two, this is another way of writing it. This is inverse sine. This is inverse sine 1 half. So theta, so we have to think, where is the y value positive 1 half? And since this is sine, we only look at the right two quadrants. Sine is positive in quadrant 1, negative in quadrant 4. So our y value that we want is at 30 degrees, also known as pi over 6. Okay, that's what we're doing here. So we're looking at the value. Tangent, that's the value that's off to the side where it's sine divided by tangent. So we know that tangent is the square root of 3 over 3 when it's at 30 degrees. However, this is a negative. So we need to be down in quadrant 4 for, or for number 3. So... We know that it's 330 degrees, but we only go from negative 90 to 90. So this is actually going to be answered negative 30 degrees and negative pi over 6. Okay, even your calculator knows how to do that. If you type second tangent of negative square root of 3 over 3 in the calculator, if you are in degrees, even your calculator will know to use the negative 30 and not the 330. Okay, just so you know, a little tip, tip, winky face, winky face. So, cosine, inverse cosine of negative square root of 3 over 2. So, cosine is negative in quadrant 2, whereas x, negative square root of 3 over 2, uh, that's going to be at 150 degrees, also known as 5 pi over 6. And you can see where this is going for the next one, whereas tangent, negative 1. Tangent's going to be negative, where sine is negative, so it's down in quadrant 4. And that tangent value is 315 degrees, also known as negative 45 degrees and negative pi over 4. Last one. Think about it for a second on your own. Where is the y value negative square root of 2 over 2? And that answer would be at negative 45 degrees, also known as negative pi over 4. All right, so that's how you use inverse trig with a unit circle. Now, that's not the only way you can do inverse trig. We could also do calculator inverse trig. Calculator inverse trig is where you just take your calculator and you just press the second button. So second, and then we would type cosine, and this little negative 1 will automatically pop up. And you just type negative 0.453. 1, and click enter, and it's going to give you a certain value. Which value are you looking for? Well, this says in both degrees and radians, so you always need to check your calculator mode in this chapter. So if you are in degrees, it will say 116.9 degrees. If your calculator is in radians, it will tell you point or 2.04 radians. So you have to make sure you are in the correct mode for each time you type it in your calculator. Okay? Always make sure you check your mode. If you answer an entire quiz or a test in the wrong mode, you're going to have some really, really shocking results. So the next two are the same thing. So you just press second tan of 0 0.9904. When you are in degrees, it'll give you 44.7 degrees. If you are in radians, it will tell you 0.78 radians. And no matter what you do, no matter what mode you're in, the next one is going to be not possible. And if you think about it, sine is always what? Opposite over hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is always the longest side of a right triangle. So it's never going to be bigger than 1. So sine or cosine will never be bigger than 1. So sine of theta can never be 4 or 5 or 2. So that's it. It's not possible. 
So, little flashback. How do we find theta of a right triangle? It's just using inverse trig. So we have an adjacent hypotenuse, so that's the cosine of theta, is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. How do we get cosine to go away? We have to do inverse cosine of both sides. So theta is equal to inverse cosine of 15 over 27, which is 56.3 degrees. Okay, so that is inverse trig for you. This is Longo and I'm out. See you, bye.